Hey guys and welcome to another video. In this video, we're actually going to do a showdown of Chip versus Raspberry Pi Zero. Raspberry Pi Zero is the hyped $5 computer from the Raspberry Pi Foundation and Chip is a $9 computer made by a company called Nextlinko. Chip was funded on Kickstarter and both of them have almost come out in the same time. In this video, we're actually going to go over what are the pros and cons of each board, see what features each one has to offer, and overall compare them and see which one is best. And so for this showdown, this is the points table we're going to use. We're going to compare each board on its price, GPIO, ports, speed, functionality, forum slash support, and then see the overall tally. And so to buy a chip, we want to go to getchip.com. That's their official website for Next Thing Co. So let's click on chip. And here you can see the web page is loaded and it says everything's being shipped in June 6, 2016. That's, I only have it because I'm a Kickstarter. Oh, there we go. We added it in our cart. And you can see subtotal so far is $9. And so here you can actually see some of the specs that chip they advertise it with. So it says Wi-Fi built in, a gigahertz processor, storage, etc. It's full-fledged actually. And so, okay, to compare this to the Raspberry Pi, let's add the HDMI. In theory, we don't need it because chip has composite and it'll only be $5 more, but let's just add HDMI. And you can see the HDMI plus chip total, subtotal is $24. And so that is sort of expensive, but if you don't get the HDMI, chip on itself is just $9. And so on the Pi Zero, on the other hand, when we're trying to buy a Raspberry Pi Zero, the first instinct is Amazon. So I went on Amazon and tried to get one. And you can see there's no Pi Zeros available. That's because the Pi Zero is still in limited production and is selling for lots of money on eBay. Or you can go to a local store like Micro Center in my case. And here it just shows my, some default store. I don't know why. but um, So let's just search for a Raspberry Pi Zero. And let's hit enter. And you can see, there it is, Raspberry Pi Zero Development Board. And you can see, find online, buy in snow, or sold out. So it's very hard to get, and I'm pretty sure not any other stores. But let's also add a storage card. And so after searching on Micro Center's website, I found the Samsung 16 gig micro SD card. This one's actually the most recommended one for the Raspberry Pi, to my knowledge. And I use it on all my Raspberry Pis. So you can see it's $9. So 9 plus 5 is 14 bucks, but chip is only $9 and comes with storage. If you need the HDMI, it's, chip is going to be more expensive, but for maker projects, most people are just going to use the chip's GPIO or the Raspberry Pi's GPIO. So in the case that we're using it, just the board, we're looking at a Raspberry Pi costing around $14 plus Wi-Fi and any other dongles you need, but chip has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in. So in the long run, chip is a more cheaper option. And so uh, we're going to first take a look at the Raspberry Pi Zero, which basically has the same header as the Raspberry Pi 2. Um, without doubt, we all know that the Raspberry Pi is the leader for GPIO because chip only has eight GPIO pins available to use, while the Raspberry Pi Zero has 17 usable GPIO pins. That makes it without doubt a leader. And um, Raspberry Pi Zero also has the widely used wiring Pi, which still hasn't been ported to a uh, chip. And overall, the Raspberry Pi is a lot better experience if you need many GPIO to use. But we will still look at chip's GPIO as it do, does have some GPIO and some advantages. Okay, so this is the chip's GPIO pinout. And um, so it has two headers, uh, U13 and U14. Each are 20 pin headers. So chip has uh, two by 20, sorry, uh, two by 20 headers. So chip, when you look at it, looks to have a total of 80 GPIO pins. But in reality, the only pins you're able to use are the ones on the right side, which are labeled X, I, O, P, zero, and all the way labeled through P7, so there are pins 13 through 20 on the U14 header. 
And you can see there's a lot of grounds, 5 volt, 3.3 volts. It does have SDA, uh, SCK, so it does have I, uh, I squared C. It has um, serial connections built in. Um, in that case, it is very useful. It has also LCD headers. I don't know how you'd use those, but you could use those if you wish. But in reality, chip only has eight GPIO for sensors, etc. If you're not looking at the I2, uh, I squared C bus. So chip does have uh, quite a few less uh, headers, but uh, it is still for its price. This is actually quite advantageous that you still have eight GPIO because even though Raspberry Pi Zero ha is five dollars, you'd still need storage, Wi-Fi and any other thing while chip has everything built in. So now we're going to move on to part three. And so now let's take a closer look at both of them. On the right we have the uh, Pi and on the left we have the chip. I put an SD card for comparison. Let's take a closer look at chip. Here we have a closer look at chip. Um, so on chip on the left side you can see there's one USB port, one composite port and another micro USB port. The advantage with the micro USB port is it could be used for power or it could be used as a USB on the go. So you actually have technically two USB ports on this. Uh, the middle big chip with the sticker on it, that's the flash of the um, chip. And uh, on the right hand lower near the header you can see a slight um, picture of a blue chip. and the, Blue is actually the real tech. Uh, right above it, there's another processor, as you can see. That's the power management, which actually works in relation with the J4 battery connector on this chip. So the J4 battery connector can be used to uh, connect a battery and use it externally, and it can also charge it with the micro USB. Very nice. On the back, we have the processor, the all winner R8 CPU, one gigahertz, as we saw on the website. And right next to it is the, uh, I believe, the RAM by Samsung. And so now we're looking at the Raspberry Pi Zero. On the top, we have the 2x20 uh, GPIO header area. You need to solder your own uh, pins if you want to use these. Uh, this actually gives you the option to use a male or female uh, pins. And this will also let you use the Pi hats, which are very popular, the add-on boards. On the left side, you have the micro SD card. Uh, just like a regular Pi, in the middle you have the Broadcom, uh, I believe it's the BCM2835, clocked at 1 gigahertz. Um, bottom left corner is the uh, HDMI, micro HDMI. Bottom right port 1 is USB, it's labeled, and then the next one to it is the power in, and that's the uh, total uh, Pi Zero board. So it, it is quite small as a Raspberry Pi, and uh, the mounting holes are the same size as the original uh, Pi, by the way. And so now we've completed a look at both chips and Raspberry Pi's ports. To compare, the chip has a lot more ports, and uh, it can be used for, say, a security camera, because it does have a built-in Wi-Fi chip. And it has two USB ports, so two cameras. Um, in terms of USB, chip has a lot more options. The Pi Zero has the HDMI port, which is actually a big advantage over chip, as chip only has composite. You need to pay $15 on top of the chip's $9 fee to get an HDMI adapter. Another advantage with chip is the J4 battery connector, which allows you to power chip off a battery and also charge the battery. So say you're using it as a security application, when power goes out, chip will still function from its battery and again charge the battery when power comes back. The Raspberry Pi does not have that functionality and usually requires some sort of adapter. As a win-win situation, uh, Raspberry Pi Zero has its advantages and chip has its advantages, but in terms of ports, chip, I believe, is the overall winner. In part four, we're going to test speed, so we're just going to run a suspension test. I'll leave a link in the description below for you guys to learn more about suspension. But we're earning max prime at 500 on chip. This is chip. Uh, first execution time is 4.9214 seconds. Uh, the lower the time is, the faster the processor. Now I'm going to run a more intensive suspension with 750. And uh, there we go, we're running.
And uh, there we go, we're done. Uh, the s more intensive suspension took uh, 8.417 seconds flat. Uh, okay, so that's the uh, ch uh, chip suspension. Now we're gonna move to the Pi suspension. So now we're at the Raspberry Pi. Uh, let's run the same suspension, 500 and 750. And uh, there we go, we got 5.6307 seconds for uh, suspension at 500. Let's run it at 750. Seven five zero. There we go. Let's run. Oh, there we go. Um, Pi does seem to be a almost a half a second slow, a uh, quarter of a second slower than a chip. Okay, there we go. We're done. Um, chip uh, did it in uh, eight point four one seconds, and uh, Pi Zero has done it in nine point seven zero four one. So that's almost a second and a half slower than the chip. So Pi Zero is somewhat slower than the chip. And so now we have a boot test of chip. Uh, let's see how long it takes to boot chip. So I'll uh, power it on and uh, click the start at the same time. Uh, and there we go. We have a chip going through the boot up sequence. Uh, it's just started the kernel. And um, chip, in my observation, is sort of slower. OK, there we go. Debian uh, Jesse is now booting. And uh, I think a few more seconds. And so you can see it has Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, everything boots up. Uh, and there we go. We have a login. You can see first chip login. Um, I'll just wait for it to hit enter again and uh, give me a proper login space. This is through serial, by the way, a serial connection. Um, 44. It's actually a lot longer. Just give it a few more seconds. Ah, there we go. Ship took 53.5 seconds to boot. And so now I'm going to try to boot Raspberry Pi Zero at the same time, just like I did with Chip. So let me plug in power and uh, click the stopwatch at the same time. Uh, go. Yeah, there we go. I plugged them in at the same time. There we go. Um, there we go. It's detected the SD and it's trying to go through. Just like a uh, chip, uh, I did this on a serial connection as well. And uh, 12 seconds in, uh, 4 seconds I believe it's to load kernel and everything I guess. And uh, now it's trying to mount the fuse control file system. Uh, 26 seconds. This feels like a rocket launch. <laughs> Forty seconds, still waiting for Pi. Fifty-six seconds is chip, so let's see if we can beat fifty-six. And uh, Pi is faster with fifty-one point one seconds. Uh, that's actually pretty good. And so this is the overall comparison. Uh, boot time, Raspberry Pi, obvious winner, just by two seconds. Um, Sysbench and uh, 500 and 750 were actually the true tests for the processor. Um, the Sysbench uh, chip did it in 4.92 seconds. Pi Zero did it in 5.63. Uh, I think the boot time was slower on chip because it was loading stock Debi uh, De uh, Debian Jesse, while Raspberry Pi Zero was actually running Raspbian Jesse. So uh, I sort of optimized for the Pi, but. Um, I think overall we can, it's safe to say that uh, chip is the winner in terms of a performance. And so now let's compare the functionality of both ports. Um, to com sum it up, uh, the Pi does its stuff and the chip does its stuff. Um, but uh, to go more in depth, um, the Raspberry Pi is actually, uh, its HDMI output makes it actually very functional as a video display, um, some sort of video monitor that can show statistics. It's very low power consumption, so um, that it would be very functional in that way. But uh, you need Wi-Fi, you need a lot of stuff. Uh, but price per project would actually increase with Pi Zero, even though the main board is cheaper, a lot of your stuff become expensive. Like the on-the-go cables that are good quality are quite expensive. Um, also, the micro HDMI not common. Not you're not you most probably don't have it in your house, so you need to go buy the adapter. 
The SD cards also, if you do a lot of read and writes, they tend to fail. I've actually had a few SD cards fail before. So the SD cards are also a sort of problem. Chip, on the other hand, um, it has two USB ports, composite video. If you're looking to do anything with video, chip is not the ideal solution. Something like a security camera is actually an ideal thing to do with chip. It has the battery connector for backup power. It has a USB port. You could actually do my Motion Eye tutorial on chip and I've actually tested it and it's fully functional with a USB camera. Exactly the one like we did with the PlayStation Eye camera. It has four gigs of flash so any high volume, high storage uh, options will not work. Um, uh, you have the two USB ports so if you want external storage there you go. Um, doesn't have Ethernet. Uh, both of them don't have Ethernet. Um, Wi-Fi. Uh, Chip actually has had better Wi-Fi performance than my Raspberry Pi. I think it's because it's, it's the built-in Raspberry uh, built-in uh, card for Chip, and as well as it's a Realtek card. And I tested some cheap Rylink adapters with my Raspberry Pi, but I'm not sure on that. Mm. In terms of GPIO projects, hands down, Raspberry Pi wins right there. If you're looking to do some sort of GPIO project, Raspberry Pi wins there. Just add a Wi-Fi dongle storage and add the sensors you need, there we go. But if you're looking like a simple sensor, actually right now my one of my other chips is working as a flood detector near my sump pump. So uh, it's just one sensor um, with uh, using it as a, using a water sensor and that's connected to a GPIO pin. I'll most probably make a tutorial on that soon. Um, so uh, I think in terms of functionality, chip offers a more wide range. You could do more, but Pi Zero seems to be limi uh, limited by its ports. So chip actually does seem to have more functionality considering it can also run Android because it's an ARM V7 versus uh, Raspberry Pi Zero's ARM V6L architecture. Overall, to sum it up, chip does offer more options, but the Raspberry Pi, even though it has fewer options, it's a lot better at the fewer options it gives. Chip is just allows you to try a wide range of uh, projects so far. This is hands down the easiest decision. Um, we all know the Raspberry Pi forum, official forum, is crazy. You can get any answer you want there's so many people it's very active but then again raspberry pi has been out for a long time it was one of the first um, microcontrollers with wi-fi running linux so there are a lot of stuff available it's widespread you can see there's so many so many sections education programming you name it it seems to be there and uh, using the raspberry pi so for a beginner it's even easier community pi store education programming whatever you can do on the Raspberry Pi seems to have been documented on this form and it seems to be very complex. So let's take a look at Chip's forum. Uh, okay, so now we're at Chip's forum. So let me go to the Chip only category. And uh, here we are. Um, you can see it's not as complex yet and that's also because Chip is still, Next Thing Co is still a small company and they're starting to come out. And you can see they're still it's very active. Even though Chip hasn't been out, you can see the posts that are coming in. And, um, oh, wow, there's a cool one. Turning the chip into an Amazon Echo. Comment down below if you guys want to see that as a video. Um, you can see there's a lot of options there. Um, you can see there's people making the Sonos Killer Project, Barracuda Driver. This I think this is the hard drive, I believe. Harder driver that you can use, I think. Barracuda Driver. But you can see... Chip's form isn't complex, but it seems to be growing at quite a big rate because Chip is becoming very popular. To conclude, I think in terms of pure points in this showdown, Chip won hands down. Um, but uh, for the consumer who's buying, if you're a beginner, go with the Raspberry Pi. It has the most support. Forms are complex. You have a lot more projects available that have been tested. You know it works. Uh, GPIO, they're more available. Uh, if you're more, if you're sort of already uh, familiar with Raspberry Pi and you want to try a new product, I think Chip is a great alternative. Uh, in a few uh, more years, just like the Raspberry Pi is aged, I think uh, Chip will also become a very advanced product. It'll become a family of products, and I think at that time we'll see 
chip and Raspberry Pi being both very similar and uh, very cool and I can't wait to see that. Thanks for watching guys.